so in the last class we have seen uh, the prescriptive process models under that already i have discussed that a process models comes into two categories one is the prescriptive another is specialized so we have discussed in the last class about the waterfall waterfall model consisting of the flow will be a linear flow linear generic flow which consisting of communication planning modeling construction deployment all sort of things in a linear fashion we are doing so in communication try to remember the activities what we are doing here because most of the task is similar in upcoming models as well only the way you are applying the model maybe some models will be a linear some models may be iterative some models may be evolutionary some models may be a parallel only that difference but the activities point of view in each uh, the flow like communication planning modeling construction deployment is same in all maybe if you are applying the model is a linear model or maybe a iterative model or maybe a evolutionary model okay so if the activity is the same the task inside the activity is also be same no doubt about that so as part of the waterfall we have seen the activities under the communication the task under the communication activity or project we had to initiate and requirement gather so these are the two tasks comes under communication activity under the planning activity we have three different tasks we are performing one is estimating scheduling tracking so what we are estimating the time how much it required how much the resources the cost all such type of estimations and scheduling tracking will be done coming to the modeling activity we are doing two tasks one is analysis another is design and in construction we are doing code and test and in deployment we are doing the three tasks one is delivering support feedback so these are the activities under waterfall and the respective tasks we have discussed in the last class also we have seen for a normal uh, beyond the syllabus that is v model so for each phase we are applying some sort of testing if you are see the requirement modeling we are applying the acceptance testing for architectural design we are seeing the system testing for component design we are seeing the integration and for code generation we are applying unit test so this sort of stuff will be seen in the fourth unit about the testing so we have a limitations like in the waterfall for real projects we are not able to apply for this for real time projects we are unable to apply this and also for explicit explicit in the sense because it is a sequential is a linear flow of uh, activities you are doing any dynamic changes explicit in the sense explicitly outside means dynamically any changes comes it is very difficult to fit that one because we again start from beginning to complete the entire so if any change required in the uh, construction phase again we have to go from communication planning again we are going for the construction so sequential because of that not able to un, uh, until the late in the project timeline so that's what the flow will be not available until everything has to complete until unless we have to wait for that also we have seen some two different examples there now coming to uh, today we'll see about the next model in the prescriptive that is incremental process model coming to the next is incremental process model in the name itself it called as incremental so for each iteration it is generating one increment let me see that in the linear and in the linear linear sequential model what we have seen is in the linear sequential model it is not suitable for project which are iterative in nature because it is a linear the waterfall it is not suitable for iterative in nature iterative in the sense the total five activities whatever we have that will be making as iterative so in each iteration this incremental model will be generated in increment part so increment model suits such project which projects iterative in nature so how you are doing is initially the requirement phase or regionally well defined and compile need to be provide limited functionality quickly so this functionality further can be in later releases because each iteration will be released in increment in that increment if you are not satisfy again you can do some changes you can make changes applicable in the second iteration second iteration is a second increment so software is developed in the form of increment so increment model means it delivers a series of releases 
each release here called as increment. So when you repeat an iteration for all the five activities, it releases one increment or it releases one something that something is called as an increment. That increment provide you a progressive more functionality for the customer. If the customer is satisfied with that increment, it go ahead further. If not satisfied, again that increment delivered to the customer. If not satisfied the customer, it again the changes has to be do. Now how? Let me see with the graphical representation how an increment model will works. Now if you see carefully in this figure, we have. If you see carefully, we are going to talking about each increment. Increment one, increment two. Increment one here. Increment one, increment two, and so on up to n number of increments. So if you see, observe carefully. In each increment, we have five boxes. What are the five boxes? Is like we have five activities. Communication, the first box. In the top of the figure, it is already shown clearly. The what the parts indicates. These are these are the boxes, right? The second part indicates planning. The third indicates modeling. The fourth indicates construction. The fifth indicates deployment. So what you are doing in the communication? You are going to planning in the communication, project initiation, as well as gathering of requirements. And in planning, what you are doing? You are estimating, scheduling, and tracking. So these are the buzzwords or terms you need to be make habitual. Once we are completing all these process models, in the modeling we are doing analysis part as well as design part. In construction we are doing coding, testing. In deployment we are focusing on delivery and feedback. Clear? So for all performing on that, it delivers one first release. That release is called as increment, first increment. If it is satisfied by the customer, it's okay. Any changes is done, it goes to second increment. Like this, nth increment will confirm. To the customer that the customer has fully satisfied. So this graph shows you, this figure shows you. In the x-axis we are talking about the time. In the x-axis we are talking about the time. In the y-axis we are talking about the total software functionality, functionality of this and failure rates. If any features is there, any changes or any failures, it will be identified in the previous increment. It will be rectified in the next increment. So whatever the functionalities and features we have. Will be done in increment to increment. So, if more the number of increments, more the changes, more the features you are going to be incorporating. If less is there, we can complete it within the small part. So, best example is word processing software. Word processing software. You can apply the example for this one. Previously, we have uh, Word 97. Later, it is Word 2003. Later, 2007, 2010, 2015, 17. Now, currently, we are using Word 2020. So these are the different versions of word softwares we are getting over here, so that we can get back. So please draw the figure in the increment. I will give you two minutes of time to draw this figure. Please draw the figure. fine so hope 
so once you have done with this because without drawing the different figures it is a tough job to you to explain clearly in the examination point of take x axis y axis i'll wait for another minute please complete it right so if you are not have uh, a practice of uh, drawing or writing something it is a very tough task to you right so please try to make a sketch for already you are maintaining a separate book please maintain that one uh, book as well right now coming to the explanation part for this one as i said you each iteration each iteration it is releasing a software releases in the form of increments first increment constitutes core product the first increment whatever we are say, seen in the exam in the figure it's called as core product basic requirements are going to be addressed over here if core product undergoes detail evaluation by the customer will send to the customer if detail evaluation has done by the customer has has a result plan is developed for the next increment here we are going to be sh shown to the customer such a way that this is how your prototype or your model or your product look like if they satisfy whatever the requirements are covered in the first core requirement core increment then it move to the next detail information once it is done plan is developed for the next increment plan is addressed any modification has done from the customer will change into that if no change process is repeated until the complete product is produced so so that any changes at each phase we are going to be following but in each increment we are following all the phases but if you observe in the figure we are giving how much of priority how much of the priorities we are going to giving for increment to increment it depends on like in the first increment more focus on whether all the requirements whatever we are collected gathered by the a uh, developer is completed in the first increment or not more focus on the gathering of the requirements in the second more focus on the design part like planning schedule will complete or not the third increment talks about like this on an average if you see all the five different activities in the five different uh, increments the project will be seems to complete or okay so until the complete of the project or product the entire process will be repeated for each increment based on the number of changes the are getting our feedback getting from the customer the number of increments will be more okay now software evolves like it is a over a uh, period of time it is going to be evolving over a period of time evolves over a period of time as all of you agree with this so business and product requirements often change a development process making a straight line path to an end product unrealistic in the sense the total flow will be look like as a in a saturation means in a flow of increasing in the in the flow of a straight line it's not like sometimes you are satisfied sometime again in the planning again you are asking the changes again if you are in the construction again you are coming back to the requirement phase again like this if it is a zigzag of curve if it is not in a straight line then there is a more problem so in the business if it is a straight line of improvement then definitely there is a growth in the product there is no much changes will be there that is a called as making a straight line path and evolutionary models or iterative in nature so we have different types of evolutionary models we'll see in uh, upcoming
but as part of in the syllabus it is not there evaluation model but anyhow for your understanding i will just cover also evaluation models are iterative in nature iterative in the nature nothing but it will be a wrong like as i said you in the figure it will complete communication planning modeling construction deployment it's a one iteration like this if you are repeating this is towards this one then it is a very easy to moderate uh, to the day to day applications what the more requirements are coming from more changes are coming from the customer so evaluation process models produce and increasingly if you see and increasingly so if you see that one increasingly it is going to be having a complete version of the software in each iteration in each iteration we are doing that now different types of evaluation models are available as part of this so in this one evaluation of the models we have first one prototyping second one spiral third one concrete development model so till now what we have seen in today's classes incremental process model how it has done the incremental with respect to the project calendar time and software functionality and features how each incremental called as how it is done that's sort of stuff we have completed in this topic right hope you understand this